1990s and the last decade, there was a huge move towards transparency, right? The idea that governments, businesses should expose their, uh, expose their data, especially governments who are collecting the data with our tax dollars and, and are legitimated by our support. Uh, and to, to a surprising degree, that campaign has succeeded. If we get the data that's inside these companies and organizations and we bring it and expose it to the public, there will be unlimited demand for studying how government does business, studying what these businesses are up to and so forth. Right? And so I've been asking myself, why, given that all this data is out there and available, why are people not actually using it? And I think there, there are at least two, at least two things going on. Uh, one is that the public doesn't consume data. We consume stories. And so it takes, <coughs> it takes organizations that, that are expert at combing through the data, sorting the wheat from the chaff, figuring out what parts of the stories matter. And that is, I think, a new challenge for the newsroom, is the felicity with turning enormous volumes of data into the kinds of stories the public cares about. Journalists are addicted to secrets. Uh, the, uh, the paradigmatic case of truly great journalism in the United States is Watergate. But when you look, <coughs> excuse me, when you <coughs> look at the last 10 years of, of great journalism in the U.S., many of these stories are actually about someone looking through public data. So there's a woman named Lauren Fox who helped bring down Enron. She didn't penetrate any conspiracy. Nobody handed her a thumb drive with the incriminating documents. She just sat down with their paperwork and said, let's see if we can figure out how these people make money. It was, it was hiding in plain sight. Uh -huh.